about quality assurance and the importance of monitoring system to collect uh, data of a PV system to be able to identify any technical issue. What you can see here is an example of a monitoring system uh, for a PV system which is located at the environmental campus in Birkenfeld in the western part of Germany. What you can see on the left hand side see a lot of uh, diagrams and uh, data visualization uh, you can use to uh, evaluate uh, the PV system. In the main window you see the actual data. In this case uh, you see the uh, energy production and the radiation of the 7th of June 2020. Um, in the bottom you see actual uh, data or the sum of the data shown in the diagram. And what we want to do is now we'll go through the different diagrams to understand what they show and what they are for to analyze the PV system, to evaluate the quality of a PV system and to identify any issue, malfunction or uh, failure. And what you see, we have selected the energy generation of our uh, system. Uh, main window now sh shows in red uh, the power over uh, the time. You see beginning um, of energy production in the morning at uh, half past five and then we see uh, the sunrise uh, shown in, in the yellow uh, curve uh, representing the, the irradiance and then in the evening you see the, the sun set uh, at uh, half past nine. What you can see now on the one hand, you, you see for each five minute value, you see the power uh, and the irradiance, so the power in, in kilowatts and the irradiance in, in watts per square meter. Um, and you can go along and have a, have a look at the data. You see it, it has been a cloudy day on the 7th of June with a sunny parts and then cloudy parts. So you see in, in the afternoon, a fast change of sunny and uh, cloudy parts, uh, a large drop due to uh, heavy clouds at uh, 16.50 and uh, then again rise and th th that's a typical cloudy day. And what you can do now is you can go back in time on the one hand to have a look what has been the uh, uh, distribution of the power and radiation uh, in the past. You see 6th of June again cloudy day and if you go back in time uh, you are able to see different uh, characteristics of days. You see still uh, cloudy days. Uh, this was a sunny day with just minor clouds. You see uh, these ripples uh, in, at noon, but this is more or less a clear sky day. You see this fast increase on the 2nd of June, uh, just minor clouds which lead to a, a drop of the power and the irradiance. Uh, one important issue is that the, you see the different scale of the axis you see on the left hand side that's the power axis and the right hand side that's the radiation or irradiance axis and uh, the scale is in this manner that the yellow curve is always uh, above the red curve so that you see, can see the, uh, the difference of both curves they don't lie above each other uh, the axis are scale that you see, can see both curves that you can see the characteristics um, and identify also or can have a look at the, the ratio between the yellow and the red curve that's help uh, that, that's helpful for uh, data analysis view from this daily view uh, to um, weekly view so now you see the the weeks from uh, the 2nd of June until the 8th of June. You see the beginning of uh, the measurements uh, of, of this day, 8th of, of June. Uh, so that's uh, today. Um, so if you, you see that the data is aggregated to uh, hourly data. Uh, we've had uh, five minute values on a daily view, but now we see the aggregation uh, to hourly data. So you can see what has happened in the last week. Um, of course, you can also go back in time. In this case, you see we have had a very sunny condition in the end of, of May uh, with a nearly perfect clear sky uh, days. Um, then, of course, you can have a look at the situation uh, in, the, in the month. You see now uh, the June, um, the uh, diagram has switched. We have now bars. You see the energy production 
and the radiation uh, for each day. For example, on the 6th of June, you see we have had an energy production of 211.23 kilowatt hours and a radiation of uh, 5,188 watt hours per square meter. So now we are talking about energy values, not a power values and then again you can go back in time and have a look at what has been the pattern of the energy production in the different months. Um, you can switch to the annual view so you see the production uh, in each month so in this case for 2020 you see we've had in May uh, very good weather conditions uh, energy of nearly 7500 kilowatt hours and a radiation of 190 kilowatt hours per square meter. Um, if you go back to 2019, you see the typical pattern for PV systems in uh, Central Europe. You see the smaller values in, in the winter month and the increase during the spring. The largest values in June, July, uh, due to high radiation values, and then the decrease of the yield uh, in, in autumn until we get the small, small use in, in December. And finally, you can switch to the uh, unlimited view. So uh, you see the energy production of the whole uh, system per year. So you see the system has been installed in 2012. That's the beginning. And then you see the annual energy production and the annual radiation um, uh, for 2013, 14, etc. You see um, in 2015, there has happened something because this red energy bar is significantly smaller compared to the other uh, bars uh, for the different years. So you can do an analysis why is this red bar uh, so small compared to the uh, yellow bar uh, regarding the radiation. And you see 2018, uh, the best year in this, in this period uh, with the highest yield, 2019 even on a higher level. Um, and um, that helps you to understand the long-term patterns uh, of this uh, PV system. If you want to have a look at the technical configuration of the PV system, what you can do is you can click on this wrench icon at the top, and then you get the technical data. Uh, in this case, you see a picture of this uh, PV system at the university. Um, you see uh, the nominal uh, output. So we have a PV system with a capacity of 45.58 kilowatts. Um, you see the uh, year of installation and the, the, the date of installation, the 7th of July 2012. And then you get uh, information about the subsystems. In this case, we have three subsystems uh, with the three inverters and uh, so polycrystalline modules. Um, you see we have uh, first subsystem has one router as SMA uh, tri-power 8000 uh, with uh, 32 uh, mo modules of the company or the manufacturer IBC uh, with a nominal power of 230 watt peak. Um, so we have a total power of 7.36 uh, 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 kilowatt. And then we have two, um, uh, the second and the third subsystem with the same capacity, same co configuration, and overall uh, you see this, this uh, configuration. You can have a look at the more detailed view. Uh, this is of course important. You see the location, uh, the longitude, the latitude of the system. So on the western part of, of, of Germany. And then you see uh, detailed information of the uh, three subsystems. Uh, you see the orientation, so the system is orientated to the south, 180 degrees is the orientation to the south. Uh, we have a tilt angle of 20 degrees of the module. So we've seen it's a flat roof, so the mountain structure tilts uh, the module to a tilt angle of uh, 20 degrees. And then what you um, see is what is uh, the uh, interconnection of the modules. In this case, uh, for the first subsystem, we have one string and 16 modules connected in series. And uh, the second and the third um, subsystem, they have uh, two different configuration due to the um, configuration of this inverter. In this case, this inverter has two MPP trackers, so you can connect two different um, um, 
PV generators uh, to this inverter. First, we have uh, 24 modules connected in, in, in three strings, which are connected to the first uh, input. And then there's a second input with 11 modules connected in series and it connected in, in one string, which are connected to the second input of this inverter. And you see this is the same conversion for the third subsystem again, 24 times 3 modules and 11 times 1 um, modules connected to this inverter. And overall we have 83 modules which are connected uh, to these uh, inverters. Uh, and from this uh, subsystem. You, is, uh, you can export all the data um, for further analysis. So, for example, if you want to take a screenshot, um, you can select this icon and uh, download this, these images. On the other hand, there's an, um, the opportunity to do this excellent export of the data, so you are able to um, analyze uh, the data by using Excel, for example, um, as this monitoring system is not able to do all um, relevant analysis you might need for a malfunction analysis. Um, so it's very helpful if this monitoring system can export your raw data. Um, what you can also do is, if you go back to the um, daily view, you can zoom in. So if you wanted to get a detailed view um, you can draw this lasso and then have you have a look can have a closer look at the data um, you can also have a direct view here at the bottom of this window at this uh, raw data you see this red crosses mark that there are it's, it's no information and then um, you see in the beginning uh, in the morning 5 uh, 25 you see the beginning of the energy production the inverter turns on and then we have this uh, energy production of this of this inverter. Um, so that's again very helpful if uh, the system is able to provide you more detailed information um, to do this uh, evaluation of this uh, PV system. Typical weather patterns uh, uh, during the seasons. Um, so first of all let's have a look at the um, 22nd of uh, April, you see that's a perfect uh, day, perfect weather conditions. You see a clear sky day, there are no clouds. Uh, you see both uh, curves run uh, the same way. Um, and uh, you see the largest energy production which is possible on, on this day. Um, these days, this clear sky days are very helpful if you want to do an uh, deep analysis because of perfect weather conditions, no uh, issues regarding uh, changing radiation conditions. So that's very, very helpful. Um, different situation, uh, let's go to January. So in, uh, uh, in the winter time, 22nd of January, you see uh, that's a typical pattern in, in the winter. Uh, you see the Still, we have a clear sky day. It's a perfect winter day. You see this this uh, peak uh, that's uh, due to shading of the irradiance sensors. So there might be an obstacle, so that there's a, a shadow on this irradiance sensor in, at noon. Um, and what you see is, uh, of course, uh, the slope of the curve is still very nice. So we have clear sky day. Uh, but of course, the to the maximum radiance is significantly smaller compared to a spring or even a summer, as the elevation angle is smaller. We have an, a larger air mass, so the maximum value is, is not even reaching 600 watts per square meter. So, um, so smaller radiance, smaller radiation over the day, and that's the reason why the the yield production of the PV system is significantly smaller uh, in in winter time, of course. Um, what you can also have a look at is what has happened uh, at the uh, <clears throat> 16th of December. So we need to get back in time, select the 16th of uh, December. So uh, you see there is nearly no energy production. Um, you see these small ripples. Let's, let's zoom in to get a better view. 
uh, you see that's the situation on the 16th of December 2018 with an irradiance just of 10 watts per square meter. What has happened? Um, of course, this this means we have a coverage of by snow um, in this case. So the, the irradiance sensor is covered and of course the modules are covered with snow. There is snow, there is no energy production. If you go back to the 15th, so there was everything uh, rather fine. We've had a cloudy day uh, in December 2018, everything's fine. And then we've had snow during the night. And then you see this uh, snow coverage of the PV modules. And then what you can also see is that uh, here on the 17th of, of uh, uh, December, um, you see, we have a high irradiance, still cloudy, but uh, the, the, we don't have any snow coverage of the irradiance sensor. And then here in the um, at noon, half past eleven, you see the beginning of energy production uh, as some of the modules uh, start to produce or uh, generate electricity, uh, and we get uh, rid of the snow uh, which drops off the modules. And then if you go. So the 18th of December is here, we're back without any snow coverage of the modules, uh, typical uh, winter day uh, in December. So that was it. That's a typical situation um, in case of any snow coverage of the modules in winter time, that there is no uh, energy production um, by the PV system. Let's step to the 11th of June. June. 11th. So uh, again, we are in summer time. Uh, what you see is here, uh, we've had a cloudy day, then rather good uh, weather conditions uh, at noon. And then you see this drop of the irradiance and the energy production at uh, 1 p.m. So what has happened there? Uh, that was a very heavy uh, thunderstorm, heavy clouds, heavy rain. So we have a drop of the irradiance down to um, nearly zero watts per square meter, so what's really, really dark. Um, you see there's no power production anymore, so you can zoom in and have a closer look at the situation with a significant drop within uh, minutes, so a heavy a thunderstorm. Um, and what you see is now uh, also is why do you need an irradiance sensor if you don't have any radiation information um, of your system, uh, you cannot decide what is the problem. Is there any technical malfunction due to the drop of the power curve or uh, are there other reasons? Uh, by using uh, the irradiance information, you know, okay, the irradiance has dropped, uh, then of course the power must also drop. So there's, uh, that's a, the reason that we have a severe weather condition. Uh, with this heavy uh, thunderstorm and there's no technical issue for systems you don't need to react and you see at uh, in the afternoon at the 3 p.m we are we are getting uh, coming back to the energy production state so that uh, the system is producing on a low level still due to heavy uh, heavy clouds uh, on the sky and if you go one step further you see uh, everything's fine with the system uh, the power curve uh, runs synchronously to the uh, irradiation curve, uh, but still you see we have had uh, um, heavy clouds uh, on the 12th of June 2018.